Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for coming to watch. So I've got you guys an update on this massive winter storm system that is really going to get going here um, as we get just towards uh, that weekend time frame, guys. All right, and we can actually see um, waves of energy that are going to be moving into the West Coast here. We have one piece of energy that's currently entering the Western U.S. Um, I'm also going to give you guys your forecast here on that storm. Uh, that you can currently see on the radar down into Texas. All right, we're just going to be talking about some rainfall that's going to be moving in. Today, in today's video, we're not going to be talking about that system after um, the snowstorm in the Mid-Atlantic, but uh, if I can get an update in for you guys tomorrow, we will definitely be talking about that because that one is going to be one to watch, and we have new information on that. Um, so stay tuned tomorrow for future updates. But just taking a look here at our current radar, you can see we've got more active than yesterday um but for, for you know the first part of this um you can see you've got a storm system down here into portions of uh eastern texas is pushing off to the east just a pe little piece of energy that's going to try and phase with some snowfall up here in the northeast in the next coming days uh, but that's not really going to do anything until this makes its way off the coastline um and then it's gonna make a quick turn towards uh newfoundland or nova scotia all right, the second thing to make mention of here is you can see on the west coast we have a storm system coming in. This is your piece of energy that's going to be delivering that big snowstorm here for the northeast. All right, uh, this is currently moving uh, to the east. All right, so we're just going to see waves of energy getting into January that are really going to be leading to some big snowstorms. And the, really this is what we're talking about here. And these storm systems get swept up in this Pacific jet stream that really just takes them uh, through the southern U.S. and then eventually into the eastern U.S. All right, so taking a look here at your current alerts, you got nothing much going on other than a few winter weather advisories going out for portions of Arizona into Nevada, these upper elevations of Colorado into Utah. All right, that's where we could see some light to moderate snowfall with some scattered flurries out here associated with that storm system coming into the Pacific uh, coastline here. Um, but other than that, we should be pretty uh, good. Um, but you can also see in the Sierras here, though, we do actually have um, winter storm warnings and going out from Northern California as well. All right, so tomorrow we will be talking about that as well if we do see some lingering snowfall. Um, uh, but you can definitely see down here into Southern California, we uh, have more of those winter weather advisories in areas that aren't going to be hit as hard. Um, so like the Los, the Los Angeles area could definitely see some snow, um, but we'll still be impacted by that snowfall. Uh, in the northern Florida and southern Georgia, we've been dealing with this for a while, but we still have freeze warnings. We're still inside of that cold front that's associated with the trough that's going to be moving through. And uh, yeah, it's bringing down those temperatures below, well below freezing. They're not going to freeze any of those, uh, you know, liquids that are out um, in the open there. All right, um, you got dense fog advisories, though, in the north. You can see in, in uh, portions of Montana and then into eastern uh, South Dakota. And then in northern Minnesota, we have more winter weather advisories. All right, so take a look here at the NAM 3-kilometer model for the southeast. We're just going to be looking at today's forecast because of that system that's coming in. All right, um, so this was a story 2 p.m. today. Uh, we had pretty clear skies because we have this high pressure here. Um that is uh, in place here in a portion of uh, of uh, Arkansas, but that's not the high, that's not the strongest of high pressure that you'll see. So that's going to be moving out uh, as the system comes in. You could see in eastern Texas, we could be dealing with rumbles and thunder and some, uh, mo you know, mo heavy to moderate to heavy rainfall, I should say, um, to move through the region. Maybe some isolated flash flooding because you can see this is a pretty slow moving system. That's your first. Uh, band, I should say, of rainfall. Here comes the second one, though, into East Texas. More showers um, and maybe more, more rumbles of thunder all right, um, associated with this, but these uh, thunderstorms and these pockets of rainfall move into Louisiana, getting through the rest of tonight. So it's going to be a very rainy night, very wet night for the Deep South. This rides through the Gulf Coast, this uh, low here, and it brings in a lot of moisture with it. Um, and so eventually, by the time we get to uh, tomorrow, we're getting to tomorrow night. All right, so this is basically uh, afternoon tomorrow here. We can see that the storm is exiting the uh, Louisiana coastline. Now this is moving towards Alabama and uh, Florida here. And then uh, by dinner time, the storm system will be moving into Georgia, 
uh, the Carolinas, and then Florida. Um, as this cold front is moving down, though, some of that you know northern northerly energy uh, that's going to be associated with a northwesterly flow. All right, that could actually change the snow if you're behind this cold front here, um, up into portions of North Carolina, and then maybe all the way up towards West Virginia. I don't think we're going to see much snow in the southeast, though. Um, it's going to be mostly a rain event. All right, um, but you can already see that the jet stream is getting quite active here, um, and that system moves out uh, by Thursday, all right, um, and then that's pretty much it for the southeast. All right, so taking a look at the eastern U.S., we're looking at this big system, uh, or this big snowstorm that's really going to cause some big problems in the in the, the next, uh, you know, few days, all right, um, so it's that piece of energy in the west that's really going to be triggering all this snowfall, and so we're going to be comparing the GFS and the European model because there's still some model disagreement, um, which means that this is still um, kind of far out. All right, but we're getting to the short to medium term, so we got to start talking about a little more specific here, talking about snowfall totals, excuse me, and what specific impacts we could be talking about. All right, so looking at the latest GFS, this is the 18Z GFS. So as the system's coming in, it's coming in from the west, we could already see that it's starting to gain energy, and actually... It's looking pretty big already. So this is already a strong system. All right. But before we get through the rest of this run here, in in order to figure out how much snow we're going to see, you know, we, we're, we're still, we still know how to figure out, you know, where that snow is going to be placed. But we want to know how much snow you're going to see. And that really depends on how strong this storm is by the time it gets to, the eastern U.S. If it's going to maintain that energy and it's going to maintain that strength as it moves across this region, or is it going to weaken and therefore we see less snow? All right. I think it's less about the cold air, depending on how much snowfall we see. It's just how strong that the system's going to be um, as it arrives to the region. But here it comes into Texas. We're seeing a lot of snow on the north side here. We're probably going to get a few inches of snow into places. Um, in the high plains here, and then, um, you know, we, we, we get a line here um, of showers and thunderstorms, it would look like here on the south side, so, you know, heavy rainfall there into Texas, and then we can really see it loses that northern energy, all right, it's kind of falling apart, but you still have some leftover energy flying around here on the north side of it, all right, that's all going to be inside of that cold front, um, and now you, at this point, you've got a Gulf low, and this is not really looking like a strong system, all right, um, but look at this little ice starting to form here, this uh, little pocket of ice starting to form there in the mountains of North Carolina. Just watch that. This is the beginning of your shield of ice and uh, snow. All right, but notice how um, before the system is about to jet up the coastline, you have cold air in place. All right, this is your 32-degree line. So anything past this line here, anything in this region is going to be snowfall. All right, but... The, the thing with the system is that w whenever these systems track through the coastline, they always bring up a lot of moisture from the Gulf um, and the Atlantic, uh, and sometimes, you know, sorry, either the Gulf or the Atlantic, but sometimes both, all right? And so that's gonna just going to bring up all this warm air and this high-pressure ridging, okay? So that's going to block that uh, snowfall, um, and, or it's just going to change a lot of that uh snowfall over rainfall all right um but here we go we're getting uh into january 6th which which this would be saturday all right so we're getting to saturday morning at this point we can start to see a lot of that snowfall uh, rainfall i should say on the front side of the system it's changing over to snowfall and that's where you see the shield of rain and ice begins to form and now you've got a big winter storm for areas near uh, the West Virginia and Virginia border, you've got some freezing rain mixed in there. So a wintry mix, um, you know, for places into Delmarva, but mainly off to the west of there. Um, but snow is beginning to enter PA. For other areas near this cold front, it's just a very cold and heavy rainfall. And it's not really something that you like. But this is beginning to move into the northeast. So we'll switch this over to the northeast to get a close look at things. So we're getting still into, this is, um, uh, we're going Saturday into Sunday here. We're getting Saturday night, all right? And here it is. It's moving uh, into southern New England. Not really looking like a big event, but you've got a lot of heavy snow. It's snowing pretty hard down here into southern PA. This would be 
a big one for Philadelphia. I, it's very close here um, because this low pressure here on the GFS, it's tracking more inland, meaning that we're just going to see more snow inland, um, probably in some area like that. All right, um, but notice how it's bringing a lot of warm air up. All right, that means that if we continue this track here, let's say it's going to move up like that, then we'd probably see this warm air go up like that as well. All right, so it's really depending on where you are. If you're inside that warm sector, you're going to be dealing with rainfall from the system. If you're behind that cold front, watch for a rain snow line, um, and then you're going to change over to snow. But here it comes, getting into uh we're, we're getting into set saturday to sunday we're getting to the middle of the night here and now we can actually start to see snow entering the city long uh, long island and new york city seeing a pocket a band of very heavy snowfall the rest of the northeast and southern new england hanging on to a snow event here for the gfs so the gfs is still in support of a snowfall event but this has been ticking farther north guys and i me and uh, many others have definitely um, expected this to happen, and it is happening here. The GFS has been bringing this snowfall up farther north. That's some agreement going on with the European model, but the European model um, has been changing back and forth today, so still seeing just some disagreement and some uncertainty there in the forecast. Um, but we're getting to Sunday. Uh, we're getting, actually, this is uh, Sunday into Monday here. This is Let's see, guys. This, this is Sunday, the middle of the night, Saturday into Sunday. So this is 1 a.m. This is probably when the uh, areas of New England and southern New England, this is when this will be midway through, all right? But you could see it. You might even be able to see snow as far north as portions of extreme southeastern Maine here um, and then all the way out towards upstate New York here. This entire area could definitely see a fresh coating um, to, you know, roughly a foot of snow. All right, but we're getting into the re remainder. Uh, we're getting into the rest of Sunday. This is Sunday morning, and then we're getting into Sunday afternoon. On the backside, though, things could also get interesting because we are behind that cold front. We're well, the cold front is well uh, below all this precipitation that's left over. That's this 32 degree line, but we still have a lot of rainfall left over. So we may have warm air loft, um, which is just because there's so much moisture packed into that system that there's too much uh, moisture for this, basically for the snowfall to maintain the cold air, that it needs to stay as frozen precipitation, if you get what I mean there. So that's changed, that therefore it changes over uh, to rainfall. And so clicking for sounding here, we'll take a look at Long Island. We're still above freezing, but um, if you go back to here, all right, when that snowfall is entering New York City, this is how close it's going to be, guys. 34 degrees, so we're not even below freezing. We were still above freezing, and that's just showing a little bit of a, a smaller chance for seeing snowfall. I do think, though, that we will see snow in New York City. I think we will, all right? But I just don't think that it's going to be as much as the models anticipated earlier on, um, and that's that, that goes to show why you uh, never do forecasts too early because things can change like that in, you know, a day. All right, um, but on the backside, getting to Monday, some leftover energy could definitely bring a few more inches of snow over the northeast and more rainfall and snowfall mixed in for the city. Um, but similar areas could get hit again, um, but not nearly as more, not nearly as an impactful system. But definitely more rainfall and snowfall on the backside there in a Monday, and then Tuesday things should be clearing out, maybe some cloudy skies, but definitely very cold weather returns. All right, so looking at the GFS model here for snowfall. All right, so this is the 18Z GFS that just came out. All right, it's looking pretty similar to what the 12Z was saying. The 12Z actually, I think, was showing more snow for southern New England. But taking a look at the city here, all right, 10 inches of snow. We're still going for a little bit of a little bit under a foot of snow. So this is going to be very close, guys. Time is running out, but I think things are just going to continue to get shifted farther north. All right, and I think that these total these numbers are going to go down slowly for New York City, 
All right, but the current GFS, all right, is putting the hammer down. We're talking about just under a foot of snow for New York City, stretching into western Long Island. Um, if you didn't know, I do live in western Long Island, so right now for me, about nine inches of snow. So that's a big event for me. I'm very excited about that, but I'm not definitely not going to hype up my uh, area's forecast just because I live there. That's not what I do. All right. Um, but back down towards PA and then northern New Jersey, I think things are looking pretty good for you guys. But we did see there was a big band of very heavy rainfall just south of um, of the 32 degree line. All right. Which is where that warm front, the cold front meet. It's right into here. I think that could be shifted farther north. Really depends on where that low pressure is. If it does, I think areas near Philadelphia and New Jersey, uh, in the central New Jersey, are going to see more rainfall, less snow. Right, but for now, Philadelphia area could see right around a foot of snow, according to the GFS. And the European model isn't very different for that. All right, But southern New England, you know, really generally, if you're north of the city, you're still going to get a significant event, still, you know, four to six inches of snow. Um, we talked about yesterday how the models were not really in agreement on uh, on Boston seeing snow or not. Well, now they are, and the GFS today is showing about five inches of snow. I believe the GFS yesterday didn't say it didn't show any snow for Boston. So that goes to show also how snowfall tunnels have been shifted farther north, and now we can see. As far north as north of the Finger Lakes region, we're still dealing with a foot or over here of snow. And also up into northern Vermont and New Hampshire, we could still be dealing with multiple inches of snow. Maybe multiple inches of snow all the way up into Maine. So widespread area is seeing a lot of snow from this. But where are those heavy hitters, guys? And it's it, it's down here farther south, okay? Uh, because this cold front, all right, it's going to be hanging around. And it's going to, this is that line here. Uh, but it dips, all right, because this low pressure is going to be tracking like this, all right? Or it could be tracking like this. We just, we got to figure this out, and we just got to continue watching what the latest model guidance says, all right? Um, but we're watching in this area, widespread, you know, 8 to 10 inches of snow. Some areas seeing definitely a foot or over. But who gets the most snow from this? That's a big question a lot of people want to know. I'm watching for Southern PA. There's a lot of model agreement that this will be one of the hardest hit areas in terms of snowfall. We can see all of Southern Central and Southeastern PA seeing really just, you know, just around 10 inches of snow. Some areas seeing around a foot, but it's south of that. It's into Virginia and West Virginia, these upper elevations, but also some areas uh, that aren't, you know, necessarily uh, higher, highly elevated. That's where you're going to see the heaviest snow because, it's, once again, you're pr you're pretty far inside that cold front, all right? This warm air is going to be going like this, all right? Because this low pressure is going to be tracking, it's going to be tracking up like that up the coastline. And so, therefore, that warm air is not moving in your direction rather than areas into, like, southern New England, New Jersey, and Long Island. Those areas are going to be start to see less snowfall from the system, um, because the warm air is heading in that direction, all right? So how much snow on the GFS? We're talking about up to two feet of snow, guys. I mean, these are upper, upper elevations, but right around the border of West Virginia and Virginia, the GFS is going for up to two feet of snow, and that is, that's a lot of snowfall. That's going to cause big problems here. So we could be talking about blizzard conditions. If we get the winds, though, and tomorrow we'll talk about the winds, Tomorrow's update, uh, if I can get one in, it's probably going to be a very long one. Um, but, you know, we're going to get very heavy snowfall for a few hours with this system, according to the GFS. The European model is in a good agreement with that. We'll take a look at that in a bit. But you can see right in this pocket of reds here and then into these pinks. All right, this is where you're dealing with over, well over a foot of snow. All right, uh, but we could definitely see uh, over six inches of snow stretching all the way back to areas towards southwestern PA. So Pittsburgh, it's in this general area. All right, definitely over two inches of snow, so really two to four inches. Some areas, um, excuse me, east of the city could definitely see more snow. All right. So that was the GFS there on your outlook for the system. What about the European model? All right, well, actually, sorry. Uh, we'll look at the GFS for the ice totals, ice accumulations. We'll look at the uh, European next. All right, um, 
But here's the GFS on the, your ice totals here. All right, it's looking very significant. The GFS, all right, for now is showing a nasty ice storm for those areas that are also going to be hit by maybe the heaviest snowfall. So this is a heavy hitter for big areas. Um, into southern PA, we see two or three pockets, really isolated pockets, though, so, um, of you know widespread right around a quarter of an inch of ice. But those deeper colors of purple here, all right, look at this. We're getting over half an inch of ice. That's certainly enough to cause pileups and big problems on those roadways, guys. Whenever you have an ice storm like this, big problems on those roadways. That's the main con that should be the main concern, but. Around a half an inch of ice going down into West Virginia and then the upper elevations of Virginia and also the surrounding areas. This is where things could get extremely dangerous. Look at this. You know, some areas seeing, look at this, over an inch of ice. 1.11 inches of ice, we're probably going, going to, you know, this could be strong enough to cause power outages. This is a, certainly a big event, and the European models also definitely showing that line of uh, of uh, sleet, um, but also freezing rain here, and it's going to be right in this area, guys. It it, it could be. I think it's going to be farther south, right? But it's going to be right in this area where we could really be dealing with some big uh, ice accumulations. And I did draw that. Far, I did actually draw it just to the northeast of this area. I think that the GFS tomorrow might be showing these ice totals a little bit farther north because I think there will be more. I think that the models will be taking more towards snowfall in this area and more ice uh, in this area. All right. Uh, but down into the rest of Virginia, we're talking about well over a quarter of an inch. But so, many areas here into, into western Virginia could actually be dealing with um, almost up to an inch of ice, and that is enough to cause cars to start sliding. Um, you know, if if you're going out to your driveway to get in your car um, to go to work on Monday, all right, if there's any ice left over, it could be enough to have you slip and fall off of your feet. That's how much ice there could be on those surfaces, all right? But down to North Carolina, uh, not, as, uh, not as an significant event that the GFS is showing here, than for Virginia, but we still see, you know, just under uh, a quarter of an inch of ice, which is also enough to cause some problems. Um, and we could even see some uh, significant ice accumulations as far west as uh, portions of Kentucky and then maybe even into Tennessee. All right. So now we look at the European model for the system. All right. Um, yesterday I made a mistake in the update and we actually look at the GFS again for the second time when I actually thought I was looking at the European. Don't worry, this is the European model. I apologize about that um, error in the video uh, yesterday. But what does the European model show? All right. Well, here it comes. It's coming up from the south. All right. And we actually, when we get that rain snow line, well, here it starts to form. And we see actually farther west. The GFS was showing it farther north um, and into uh, portions of um, uh, the back country was of uh, North Carolina. Sorry. All right. We see that general area um, start to be impacted by uh, similar precipitation uh, forms here, but we can actually see that line forming earlier. All right. But pretty good model agreement earlier on. This is in the short uh, um, range here, so I wouldn't expect any you know disagreement necessarily um, in this time frame. But the the European model really wants the system to get going early, and it uh, wants it to start um, this uh, this freezing rain line. Uh, excuse me, as early as uh, Saturday. We're getting to around Saturday afternoon, so this is uh, late Saturday morning to afternoon, and we're dealing with a big ice storm. No signs of a big snowstorm, though. We're not seeing any heavy snow. I think the GFS at this point was showing uh, a lot of heavy snow into West Virginia here. Um, and then down into uh, Kentucky and uh, Virginia. But we could actually see on the European model this slow taking a track way farther inland, all right? So that is certainly, you know, I mean, when you, I mean, this is pretty crazy how we went from the low being way off towards the coastline, and now it's out here 
um, into Tennessee. All right, so that's going to bring a lot of snowfall into Ohio and Indiana. It's going to bring some of that ice and sleet down into Kentucky. Uh, watch for some higher ice totals. Again, I mentioned on the GFS how we looked at those current projected ice totals, accumulations, I should say, how we there is a chance for, you know, significant ice totals in um, Kentucky, and that's what we see here on the European model. That's definitely in support. But we see a total washout there for the rest of the southeast, but a nasty winter storm setting up there for uh, North Carolina up towards Virginia and then eventually West Virginia. But here we go. We start to see a lot of that uh, that frozen mix turn over to heavy snowfall. And we can see um, in portions of southern Ohio, we could be dealing with very heavy snowfall. Um, but same thing going all the way over to West Virginia around this area of sleet that we're going to be talking about here. Frozen mix uh, is certainly possible into um, West Virginia, but, you know, it's those same general areas, though, that we see the ti- the ti- or not the tiny pockets, but the smaller pockets of very heavy snowfall. They move through those same areas of the GFS we're showing, all right? But that low pressure, all right, it actually shifts. It creates a secondary low, and that begins to take this off the coast. And so that's where we see this uh, go from. Uh, going into Tennessee and then moving over to um, the Carolinas there. All right, and so at this point, all this snowfall could definitely move a significant amount of uh, just, you know, just amount of land off to the east. All right, and so this is what we see happened here. We're getting um, Saturday into Sunday here, and now we're getting into uh, the middle of the night. All right, and so now we could start to see some of the precipitation enter New York City and Long Island. What does the European show at first? Well, firsthand, uh, this is the 12th European, guys. The 18th came out, um, but you need a subscription uh, to look at that. Or do you? No, you don't. All right. Sorry about that. Or yes, you do. Uh, I apologize, guys. Um, but yes, back to where we were. The European wants to start this out with uh, rain and snow mix in a Long Island. Just west of there, we see a just a big mess of very heavy snowfall, all right? This, guys, this is going to be a big uh, event if the European plays out, and that is going to be for the interior northeast. It wants all of uh, Pennsylvania to see maybe the heaviest snow, all right? Um, but this, guys, on the GFS, too, is in support of this being maybe the biggest snowstorm that we've seen in years here um, in uh, the northeast, and that's just because of that snow drought that we were in. For the interior northeast, you know, for for the interior portions of Pennsylvania and upstate New York, yeah, well, maybe not the biggest snowstorm in years, but for areas east or around the I-95 corridor, totally, all right? We did not see any big snowstorm like this last year. I mean, we had the nor'easter in March, all right, um, you know, but snowfall totals were like, you know, the snowfall totals like what we're going to see here were way up here into uh, central PA and uh, upstate New York, all right? But uh, never mind that, we, we continue with this uh, run here of the European model, and it stays as, you know, all sleet for New York City. Uh, we can see all that snow staying north as that low pressure continues to track farther north, but we still see that snow uh, enter Delmarva here, um, but, you know, in a, into its far western uh Maryland, so this would definitely bring an all rain event for near for Washington DC. So apologize about that, guys. If you were wondering what the European was showing for Philadelphia, very, very close, but you're right on that rain snow line here. So about a sleet, a little bit of a sleet uh, mix here. All right. Um, but at times, if this line breaks apart a little bit, there could be, you know, periods, meaning just a few minutes, like a few minutes of very heavy snow um, inside of this rain snow line. I think that's still where there's a possibility for that heavy snow. Um, But it wants this to move all the way up into the rest of the Northeast, bring a banger for um, places like Boston, Southern New England, still seeing that big uh, ice storm, and then that heads on out. All right, and it does show the backside energy, bringing a little bit more snow into the rest of New England, um, and that completely moves out. You've got high pressure and cold air, leaving uh, the area um, uh, after the system, all right? So on the European model for the last part of the update, we look at the current projected snowfall totals, 
And here it is. There's that precipitate. Uh, sorry, the uh, 32 degree line. And here it runs right through uh, central Maryland. All right, it runs uh, north of DC, and then it's kind of goes, uh, kind of flattens out here. Um, just south of Long Island. So the European model is still barely hanging on to snow um, for Long Island, but we're still seeing measurable snow um, into the city here. And so notice there's still a big difference in snowfall totals on the GFS and the European model for New York City as a big example because the GFS, again, we were talking about 10 inches of snow for the city on the GFS, which I think is hyped up. All right, but that's that's a major model that's predicting that um, the European model two to three two to four inches for the city. That's a big difference. And then some locally higher amounts possible though uh, into the rest of Long Island here, uh, but up towards Boston, more reasonable amounts of five to seven inches of snow um, is that that's what we see here. And then really all along that coastline, we see similar amounts. But the European models in favor of around a foot of snow for the Cape Cod area. For the rest of southern New England, it wants more snow up uh, north of Long Island into Connecticut here, around six inches of snow, six to seven inches of snow. All right, um, but those big areas that we were talking about here on the GFS, the European models still in favor of a big snowstorm for, for sure. All right, but nothing you guys haven't handled here, and you can see really – you know, just six to eight inch, inches of snow replacing the 10 to 12 inches of snow that the GFS was showing. And the GFS, keep in mind, was showing two feet of snow in this area. The European model, not even showing a foot, not even showing 10 inches. So I think the European model is definitely more of a reasonable model. And I think we should definitely be relying more on the European model for this system. Um, but yeah, you can see the rest of the Northeast seeing uh just uh below 10 inches of snow and then the far interior northeast seeing you know right around five inches but maybe less but still snow into maine and new hampshire and vermont and then well into upstate new york we still see um definitely measurable snow and uh plowable snow all right so that's all i got for you guys thank you so much for coming to watch i'll see you guys in the next video stay tuned i've got more updates on the way with this system and future systems coming up i apologize um about not including the other storms i just it's school night guys going back to school um for the first time before uh since before christmas all right so just gotta shorn up this video to get to bed all right um but yeah stay tuned we'll talk about the snow totals tomorrow see what the models are going to say just continue watching the model guidance and we'll just uh, uh just continue tracking the system uh before we get to that uh weekend time frame so thank you all for coming to watch and i'll see you guys in the next one